Hello. Welcome to Transitioning to High School, What Every STEM Girl Needs to Know. We're delighted that you're here listening and participating today. Let me introduce myself. Next slide, please. Uh, I am Mary Zeiss. I'm a chemical engineer. I'm retired from Procter & Gamble, where I got to work on products like Dawn dishwashing liquid, Tide laundry detergent, Pampers, and Crest toothpaste. So that's what I did with my career. And I'm now a volunteer leader for the Society of Women Engineers, specifically on the SWEENEX Programs Committee. And that's the committee that's bringing you this session. Our quick wins for today are by the end of the session, we hope you'll be able to describe approaches to make a successful transition to high school, that you'll be able to explain the importance of soft skills as you make that transition, and we hope that you'll be able to develop a plan for when school starts to find and build your community at your new high school. So I'm gonna have the three Sweenex ambassadors in the room do some quick introductions. Hi, my name is Gia Doshi. I'm a rising sophomore in Missouri, and um, I'm so excited that you're all here to hear our stories and talk to us. Hi, I'm Zainab, and I'm also a rising sophomore in Frisco, Texas, which is in North Texas near Dallas. I'll pass it to Kavya. Hi, everyone. I'm Kavya and I'm a rising junior in Old Bridge, New Jersey. And I'm also really looking forward to sharing my story and speaking with all of you. And I will pass it back to Mary. All right, so we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. So I am going to launch a few poll questions. So if you'd go ahead and please answer the poll questions, that would be great. So the first one is which grade are you going into? Okay. We're going to end the poll and share the results. And hopefully you can share the see the results right now. So uh, three of you are going into ninth grade. One of you is going into seventh grade. And so you're getting a good jump on it. That's great. And um, one of you is in 10th grade. I'm imagining that's one of the uh, <laughs> one of the ambassadors. All right. The next question. How do you feel about your transition to high school? Just pick one. Are you excited, nervous, scared, or all of the above? Waiting for everybody to vote. Okay. And the poll, share the results. All right. So two of you are excited. Three of you are excited, nervous, and scared all at the same time. And that's completely okay. All right. Uh, the next question, what are you excited about? And on this one, you can check all that apply. This is a multiple choice, check whatever. So are you excited about making new friends, joining clubs, having new opportunities? Somebody let me know if it does let you uh, check all that apply. Is that working? Yes, that's working. We can Excellent, good. This is the first time I use that kind of a question. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. And so five of you are excited about making new friends. Yeah, but it's a great thing to do in high school. Joining clubs, having new opportunities and that fresh start, all of those are ranked highly and the increased freedom, not so much. All right, here's the last poll question. What do you worry most about? for your transition to high school. And this is also a check all that apply. So what are you worried about? Waiting for more people to vote. Okay, and the poll, share the results. Yeah, the new teachers are the ones that people are most worried about, people that you just don't know, right? And the new building they have to figure out, that'll be tricky uh, or could be tricky. New responsibilities and then the older students that you'll end up interacting with. All right, thank you very much for that. So we're gonna con uh, continue 
And one of the things that you should know is that we absolutely love audience participation. So please, throughout this entire session, you can ask questions in the chat or type the answers in the chat. All right, so let's talk a little bit about change. You know, change is a normal part of life. If you just think of your own personal self and all the changes that you've already been through, you know, you were a toddler and then you went to kindergarten and then you went to elementary school and then you went to middle school. Now you're heading on to high school, but after that there'll be college and there'll be jobs and different companies. I mean, change is just always there. It's the one thing that you can count on. Uh, change is going to be in the world. Oh, and I didn't even mention you had to learn how to do virtual classes. And now you probably have to do some hybrid classes from time to time. So all of that has changed and it's all happening. However, change is actually healthy for human beings, even though we don't like it. Change is healthy for us because it can help us develop strengths such as courage and flexibility and resilience. I learned so much about Zoom in that first six months after the pandemic to keep the Society of Women Engineers work I was doing going strong. You know, I learned so much about it. So it's actually healthy. So the change is one thing, but how you handle the transition is something else. And what research shows is that people typically go through three stages of a transition when change happens. And so I'm gonna share this model. It's called the Bridges Transition Model. And it was developed by Susan and William Bridges. And it was actually developed for companies who was making a change and needed their employees to go through the change. But what they learned is that this transition model can apply to any change that any person is going through. So let me explain the model just a little bit. Along the horizontal axis, the x-axis is time. So imagine in the far left side, it's zero time. And then how long does it take you to get through the transition? And then the y-axis or the vertical axis is the percent of people and what stage they might be in. So on the lower left side is the first stage. It's the ending stage. Something's ended, something's over, and we're forced to let go of something that we might be comfortable with. Um, it's when this is a stage in which people identify what they're losing. So you're losing your favorite teachers. You're losing a building that you know how to get around in. Um, you might be losing some friends because they may end up going to a different high school than you. And so that's sort of the ending stage. The next stage is the neutral zone. The neutral zone um, is this in-between time when the old is gone, but the new hasn't quite started yet. Um, and people in the neutral zone feel like they're in flux. They might feel a little bit of distress or anxiousness because they're just not sure what that new beginning is really going to be like. My best guess is that all of you are in this neutral zone right now. And really the school year sets up this model perfectly because you're done, you graduated from eighth grade. And now here you are in the summer before school starts. So you're in the neutral zone. Um, but then once you move on to the last stage, it's the new beginning stage. People start embracing the change. They, they feel a fresh identity. Um, they feel renewed, uh, hopeful. Uh, and the whole idea of this transition session today is to help you get as fast as you can into that renewed, hopeful uh, feeling of the new beginning stage of transition. The one thing you should remember is that your transition doesn't have to be perfect in order to be considered a success. So don't go for perfect, just go for what you see as success. So we're actually going to go into some breakout rooms now where we're gonna have you do a visioning exercise. We want you to imagine that it's September or October and you're happy and you feel renewed and everything's going well in your high school, 
What would that successful transition to high school look like for you? Okay, so how did that visioning exercise go? Did that feel empowering to think about that successful transition? I would love to have people, somebody share their vision, who's brave enough to share their vision. Just go ahead and take yourself off mute and uh, share your vision with us. What successful transition looks like for you? Um, I was just talking about how my successful transition would probably be something that um, kind of just a perfect routine kind of preset already that I didn't really have to experiment through and have to like figure out through like brute force, if you will. I don't know, like knowing what your teachers are like, what homework to expect, you know, having your friends figured out, knowing where to eat for lunch, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that all sounds good, right? Sort of snap your fingers and you're automatically into that new beginning zone without having to go through the startup phase. And so really, right, that's impractical. That really won't happen. But you can certainly, you'll hear some tips about how to make that time period as short as possible. Would anybody else like to share what's your tr successful transition look like? Any of the Sweet Next Ambassadors would like to speak up in terms of what kind of things were discussed in their room? Um, in our room, we talked about like forming connections with your teachers, making new friends, um, joining clubs, like trying out for the tennis team, and just like making new friends. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. How about you, Zainab? Yeah, um, actually, Ashmi was in my room. So after um, she kind of explained her successful transition. We talked about how we should also kind of take it easy instead of trying to plan and organize everything and kind of be in a free flow mindset. And once school starts, hopefully you'll be in that routine pretty quickly. All right, great. All right, thank you very much for being a part of that uh, participation in the breakout rooms. So we're moving on to the core material for tonight. And that's the true stories from our Sweet Next Ambassadors. So I'm going to turn it over to Gia. Hi, um, thank you, Mary. So my name is Gia and I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm currently really interested in biomedical and nuclear engineering. And, and I also really like, um, like methods of clean energy, so like windmill solar panels and things like that. Um, in my free time, I like coding, I tutor students in math and science. And um, in school, I was part of the environmental club, robotics team, math club, and some other clubs like that. Um, yeah, so can you, what's it? Okay, perfect. Um, so before high school, like in the neutral zone, um, I was really um, just the robotics team at my school. But um, so before high school, I was anxious about keeping up with work and mainly because my high school had a reputation that I've heard about from people older than me that they're having three hours of homework a night and that it's just really stressful. So I was really, really worried about that. Um, I was also worried about making more friends and like having classes where I didn't know anyone. And um, I was worried about joining the STEM community at my school and like finding my place in it because um, my high school is also like more STEM focused. So I was worried about how I would fit into that. Um, I was also worried about like the other students. I was worried about the upperclassmen and it was just kind of anxiety inducing for me. Um, so when I started high school in the first three months or so, um, I compared my, oh, can you uh, go back to this? Okay, thanks. Um, I compared my achievements to those of upperclassmen. Um, I was anxious about taking larger roles in clubs and I was really nervous to branch out and meet new people. So when I was comparing myself to the upperclassmen, it really wasn't fair to myself because they're older than me, they just had more time than I had, and they, they know more than I do. So when I was anxious about taking larger roles in clubs, it was mainly in the environmental club because there was lots of room for like new leaders and there was lots of leadership opportunities, but I just wasn't sure like how to step up and take those. So 
Um, that eventually went away, but that kind of ties into like how I was nervous to branch out and meet new people because um, I am not a very outgoing person. So I can't just like go up and talk to people. And that was like, that was hard for me. And I wanted to um, make more connections with my teachers and like have a classman and just like other people in my grade. And that was really hard. Can you switch the slide please? Okay, thank you. Um, so after about two and a half or three months, it finally started, start, started to get better. And I was realizing that everyone is a person and there's no reason to be intimidated by someone. Um, because if you go up and talk to them, they're going to be a very nice person and they'll help you if you need it. And so the most important thing is pushing yourself and like just forcing yourself into situations where you don't know anyone or like you're not completely comfortable because it forces you to like open up and it relieves some pressure kind of because you don't know anyone. And so you don't like feel forced to like be perfect and it's okay to make mistakes in those situations. So just like forcing myself out there, it helped me talk to more people, make more connections, not only with like my teachers, but also with other students. And that made the school year a lot easier for me. So doing all those, it helps me gain confidence, which was really important. And it helps me advocate for myself. And it helps me to talk to new people and to keep networking. And it helps me to gain, like to take on more leadership opportunities and roles like that, especially in the environmental club where we, um, we did a lot of leadership work and it, it worked out really well. And I had a really good time doing it. Can you switch the slide? Thank you. So my advice for incoming high schoolers is um, force yourself into new situations. You don't know what's gonna happen and it's almost always gonna go better than you expect. And it's never as intimidating as you think it is. Um, also to just throw yourself into whatever you're doing. If you're trying something new, fully apply yourself. Don't, don't just do it halfway because then you're not gonna get everything out of it and it's not gonna be worth it. And my final piece of advice is to try new things and see what you like, like sign up for clubs. Like even if, you, if it's something you haven't tried or haven't heard of, sign up and you might like it or you might not. And that's okay too. And you can, you can stop and try something else or you can just not do it anymore. And that's perfectly fine as long as you try it first. Okay, um, that's it. So we had a question, Gia, uh, before we go to Zadup slides. Um, the question was from Ashmi, out of all things, how did you find that biomed and clean energy is your passion? Like, I would really love to understand my true passions, but I'm not even sure where to start. Okay. Um, so I myself am not completely sure that I want to do like biomed and clean energy, but I have been interested in them in a long time. And I've had a lot of different interests. Over the past few years, like I've been really into civil engineering and like mechanical engineering and electrical, but um, I really got into these two after I did research on them, like researching clean energy and researching like biomedical. And also I was also considering like being a doctor, going to the medical field, and I really want to do engineering too. So it's a really good crossroads. Um, but yeah, I think just researching it to see what you like, like uh, on YouTube, there's videos of like daily life of a biomedical engineer or um, daily life of like a doctor or something like that. And I think those really helped me just to see like if, if that's the kind of like lifestyle I want to lead. So I think that's how I did it. Okay. Thank you, Gia. We'll turn it over to Zaina. Thank you. I'm going to be talking about my transition to high school, which was an emotional roller coaster, but it ended with a happy ending, which I'm thankful for. So a little bit about me. I'm a rising sophomore in Frisco, Texas, near the Dallas area, and I aspire to be a computer engineer in the future. That's where my interests lie in the moment, and I plan on going into that. I'll, also, I'm a jewelry business owner, and I have a girls in STEM um, actually, I have a Sweet Next Club under a Girls in STEM Club at my school because I wanted to start out and see if people wanted to join and if they were interested. And then I plan on making it its own club because now that I know people want to join, I can have a bigger club on its own. 
I love to learn new coding languages in my free time. And I also compete in tech and business competitions through clubs at school like DECA, um, Technology Student Association, or TSA for short, BPA, Business Professionals of America, etc. I also teach coding to younger kids and tutor them in my free time. Yeah, thank you. Um, so like that transition model Mary talked about, I'm gonna explain my transition through that model. So eighth grade was kind of the ending for me. Um, it was overall a challenging time because my best friends were going to a different high school than me. And I didn't know many people that would be going to the same school as me. So I had to, I realized that I had to make new friends and get to know people when I started school. I also was gonna choose different classes than most of the other girls that I knew because I was interested in coding and most of my friends were interested in more medical fields or other topics. So I had to feel comfortable forging my own path instead of following everyone else. And then obviously I had to embrace the unknown because I didn't know what, um, what to expect in high school. So I had to just try my best to prepare myself mentally and know that it would work out in the end. So it was lots of mental preparation and just kind of telling myself, it's okay, it'll work out. And then the neutral zone for me was the summer before high school. It was smoother sailing because I was feeling more confident in my decisions after I really researched the classes I was gonna take next year, what clubs I was interested in. And this confidence came from really researching and looking into things. So I looked on my school's website to see what clubs I would be interested in and et cetera. And I also used my free time to learn new things. So I learned a new code, I started learning a new coding language. So I would be prepared for the uh, coding class I would take at school. I watched lots of first day of ninth grade videos because that's when high school was gonna start for me. And I just wanted to see other girls kind of preparing for that day and just have a relatable moment and know that other people go through this, other people work through this. and. I'll work through it like them and be fine. I also tried to find ways to ease anxiety, which was the YouTube videos were one of these ways. And because I realized that panic or anxiousness doesn't really help. So I had to kind of calm down and realize that I'd be okay and figure out which steps I need to take to be prepared on that first day and the rest of high school. So ninth grade was my new beginning. Um, I started off nervous, which I feel like almost everyone does. So I realized that was okay and decided to have an open mind. So I signed up for anything that sounded remotely interesting to me. And I introduced myself to people. I introduced myself to club presidents just to see what I liked because high school is kind of your time to figure out what you like, what you want to do and experiment. Through introducing myself and putting myself out there, I made new friends and I formed a friend group that I love now and I hang out with them all the time. I made some mistakes like everyone does and learned a lot from them. And as I made these mistakes, I realized overthinking about them doesn't help. So I learned from them and moved on. And now I'm excited and ready for the rest of high school now that I've gotten ninth grade over. So here's my overall advice, be a yes person so if there's a club that you think you might be interested in, say yes. Or if your friends invite you to hang out, say yes, even if you're not that, um, even if you don't know them that well. And try not to overthink because I feel like that does not help at all. And I experienced it. So just deciding something and moving forward with it is the best way to go in my opinion. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Remind yourself that you're also a person. You can make mistakes. Celebrate your small victories, reward yourself, make the best of every situation. So if it, even if it's not an ideal situation, learn to laugh through it. And remember you'll get through it like you always do. Does anybody have any questions right now for Zainab? There'll be another chance to ask questions in a little bit, but if there's a question, please let us know. How did you figure out that you wanted to do computer engineering? Great question. So mine was 
a subtle process. My dad, he's in the computer engineering field, and I saw that um, it involved a lot of math and problem solving skills. And I realized, wait, that's what I'm interested in. That's what I like. So after I kind of had that spark, I researched it. And like Gia said, I watched YouTube videos about it. And I just told myself, you know what? I'm going to learn a coding language and see if I like it. And it turns out I did. So I really focused on centering computer engineering in my life and see if that was enjoyable for me. And now I'm here. So I just recommend trying it out. You don't have anything to lose. You have high school ahead of you. So just experiment. OK, thank you, Zainab. We'll turn it over to Kavya. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be sharing my story on my transition to high school. And like I mentioned before, I'm a rising junior. So I'm like halfway through, and I can't wait to um, share. So next slide, please. Yeah. So I'm also involved in SWE Next as an influencer and ambassador, and that's something that I'm super happy to be involved in, which is why I'm here today. Along with that, I'm also a published researcher and writer. I love sharing my ideas with everyone around me, whether it be verbally or even in a written form. Currently, I intern at the Federal Aviation Administration and at an organization called Junior Achievement, and these two internships are related to technology and business. Along with that, I'm also an advocate for diversity and inclusion, especially in STEM. And that's why um, this coming fall, I'm actually starting a Society of Women Engineers chapter in my school. And finally, my interests currently lie in the intersection of technology and business. Specifically, I'm interested in technology that's changing our future, like artificial intelligence, metaverse, and so forth. And next slide, please. Okay, so pre-high school. Entering high school, I felt excitement and uncertainty. And I was part of the COVID batch. So um, I had to experience virtual school for the end of my eighth grade and the entirety of my ninth grade. And the problem with that was making friends was a little challenging because we're all on a Zoom call. And I had also wanted to find a lot of extracurriculars and volunteering opportunities since going into ninth grade. That's what a lot of people told me to do. And really, my only strategy that helped me navigate was explore and connect. So even though I was virtual, there were a lot of webinars like these that I joined. And I was able to kind of ease up my anxiety and just learn more about what I can do in high school. And for the second part, which is connect, um, Oh, next, can we go to the previous slide, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, for the second part, which was connect, um, I tried to stay in touch with my old friends. Uh, we also had like this um, school platform called Teams. So I often reached out to other kids. And yeah, and when going into this year, 10th grade, we were back in person. So I was able to make a lot more friends. Um, next slide, please, yeah. So I just wanted to share my three-step framework, which I think really made my transition to high school um, a lot smooth and really positive. And the three steps are learn, apply, and share. So for the learn stage, I took a lot of summer courses, especially since I had virtual school. That meant I had a lot of time in my hands. So I took courses on Coursera, and this is a free website where you can actually take courses on everything from graphic design, computer science, coding, and so forth. And there's just so many courses and they're for free. So I did a lot of certifications through that website. And I also strived to cultivate connections, not just with other students, but also with adults who are in the industries that I'm interested in. So I built a LinkedIn profile in the beginning of my ninth grade. And that is something I strongly recommend because there are so many high school students out there so many incredible professionals out there who you can learn from. And I feel like through LinkedIn, I've realized there are so many possibilities in STEM and beyond. So that's um, that. And uh, also I did send a lot of cold emails to really gain some real world experience, which is how I got my internships. Then the next stage was apply. So like I mentioned before, I really wanted to get into some sort of real world project because I found that through experience, I can realize what I like and what I don't like. 
So after sending a cold email to a professor at a nearby university, I was able to work on some projects related to AI for the FAA. And along with that, I also found some community problems during the pandemic and I developed my Python skills through courses and I was able to create a few apps. And the fun fact about this was through working on these community projects, I actually met a lot of high school students who are also interested in coding and I felt that support network. Then the third stage of my three-step framework is share. I find that when you share your thoughts and ideas, you meet a lot of people who also have similar and different ideas as well. So I try to publish my thoughts um, through various platforms. And I actually recommend Youth STEM Matters, which is a free journal where you can write STEM articles and send them in for review. And I'm actually an editor there. So if you submit any articles, I hope to see some of yours. And along with that, I also founded a few youth focused programs to help um, other students kind of get into STEM and really develop their knowledge in coding and business. So I strongly recommend just sharing what you're learning with others because you gain a lot of connections, experience, friends, and so forth. Um, next slide, please. And my overall advice is first, um, create opportunities more than you seek them. I think like when you're creating opportunities for yourself, you're giving a lot of space for yourself to grow. And when I mean creating opportunities, there are so many ways you can do this. This may be perhaps starting a club in your school. If it's, um, for instance, if there's no computer science club in your school, you can maybe start something related to that. Or maybe there's this local business and you may offer to create and run a social media page for them to develop your skills um, related to marketing. And so there are just so many opportunities that you can create if um, you just actively network, which actually goes into my next bullet. I really recommend expanding your network relentlessly, which is something I did in ninth grade. Um, you can do this through building your LinkedIn profile, just uh, meeting new friends, emailing new teachers who may be teaching up, upperclassmen classes, and maybe you can talk to them and see where your interests may lie. Uh, my third bullet point is you are a priority. And I think oftentimes in high school, it's easy to kind of get like caught up in everything and forget that self-care is super important. And finally, I think that passion plus purpose equals the key to success. So even if there's just something you're remotely interested in, just try to like continue pursuing that passion to the end and see how you can apply it in the real world. I think a lot of times, if you take your interest and see how it goes in the real world, you can decide whether you like it or not. And yeah, that's really my story and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm just gonna pass it back to Mary for now. Okay, uh, next slide please. So does anybody have any questions for Kavya or any questions for Gia or Zainab? We have just a couple minutes before we go into breakout rooms again uh, that you can ask questions. So. Any questions, just go ahead and put yourself off of mute if you have any questions or type, type them in the chat. Um, so how do you recommend finding like, cause I have also been recommended to try and find extracurriculars and volunteer stuff in ninth grade, just cause everybody says that you kind of get caught up in other academical, academic stuff later on in high school. So how do you recommend finding that locally? Cause I have no idea where to start. For sure. Um, I would say start with reaching out to your school. Your counselor probably knows so much about the organizations and programs that are locally. And that's actually one of the things that I did. So reaching out to counselors, reaching out to teachers, reaching out to current high school students, that's the first thing I would start with. And if you're not able to do that, then I would suggest using websites like LinkedIn because a lot of student-based organizations are actually on there. And that's how I was able to discover organizations like Junior Achievement where I could work with other students on things that actually excite me. But yeah, I would strongly recommend first reaching out to your school network. And then if not, you can kind of branch out on social media and see what else. Because a lot of organizations post flyers looking for volunteers uh, on social media. Thank you. Um, I also had another question, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. If it's just a generic question. Um, so you said um, that you were really like excited to find like internship opportunities to, you know, to do some real world stuff. How would that work? Like, do you have to be 
be a certain age for internships or like how do you get connected with that stuff how much experience or education do you have to have before you like can actually be signing up for those things what what's the story yeah sure so I know that most internships they're 16 and above uh officially but the ones that I did um I'm still not 16 yet so there are definitely internships for those who are younger than that and the internships that I got they weren't like official um like I created them for myself I showed my skills and then they offered me one and I think the best way to kind of gain experience to possibly apply for an internship is just taking courses. So like I mentioned before on course era, you can actually complete certifications and these certifications can kind of give proof that you've developed your skills in an area. And I also strongly recommend just networking. Once again, I keep coming back to LinkedIn because that's where you can find so many industry professionals and just reach out, um, be respectful about it and just share that you're looking to learn. And I'm sure that there are going to be some people who are uh, willing to give you that chance and just kind of teach you along the way and give you that real world experience. But just like, you know, you can try to reach out, take courses, and I hope that helps. And if you have any other questions regarding that, you know, feel free to um, let me know. I don't know if um, other panelists want to share a little bit about how to get- Yeah, ready. there's a question out there that, Aditi asked, and maybe Dia or Zainab can answer it. What tips do you have to gain a leadership position in a club? Yeah, I can I can give her some tips. And then if you want, Dia, you can add on some more stuff. Um, so what I did was, I know this sign sounds kind of generic, but showing up. So if they have a meeting, I would always try to show, if there was a club that I wanted to excel in, I would always show up to the meetings. If they wanted a volunteer for to help out on a certain project, I would always volunteer myself for that position. And getting to know people really helps. Um, I got to know upperclassmen in the positions that I wanted to aim for later on in my high school career. So, and I asked them, what tips do you have? How do you think I should put myself out there? And asking others and speaking up is a really great way because they have a lot of information to share with you. So go ahead, put yourself out there, go to the meetings and talk to new people, especially the upper class. Yeah, exactly what Zainab said. If you talk to people and if you're asking like if they need help or if there's anything you can do for them, then they're going to see that and they're going to they're going to help you out and they can give you more work, which will lead you to a leadership position. And um, yeah, I think mainly talking to people and just using your network to um, wedge yourself in there and just help out wherever you can. Okay, great. There's going to be time for questions at the end, but if we could get the next slide, please. So it's time. You heard some great advice from our Sweet Next Ambassadors about how you could do this, plan this transition. And what we'd like you to do in the breakout rooms, and each breakout room will have one of the ambassadors in it, is we'd like you to actually develop a plan or at least start thinking through what, what will you try out of all the advice you've heard? What pieces will you try uh, in terms of your plan for when school starts to find and build your community? All right, welcome back from the breakout rooms. Who would like to share their thinking for their transition to high school? What are the tips that you're gonna try? Who'd like to share? Um, I think based on everything I've kind of heard today, I decided that I really wanna focus on just expanding my network, both like on LinkedIn and with professional like people who know what they're doing, as well as um, you know, my peers and my teachers and stuff like that and kind of see where that takes me. And then Zainab also recommended I build um, or I create small goals for myself, just to, like guide me along that. And I find that really helpful. If I'm going to um, you know, think about that as well. All right. That sounds great, Ashmi. Thank you for sharing. Who else would like to share? Anybody else? Uh, Zainab says she thinks her audio has been disconnected, so she can't hear anybody. 
Um, she's working to work on that though. Um, let's see. Um, Pavia, do you want to talk a little bit about what was said in your room? Yes, definitely. So in our breakout room, we discussed about like joining clubs and um, students in my breakout room, they were already involved in activities like robotics teams. They're just going to continue that. And they actually have a support network that it's going to help them in that. And yeah, just making new friends is another priority. But I think like we we're talking about how you can just connect with people and just um, use your teachers and counselors as really good resources. Okay, Gia, do you want to summarize what was discussed in your room? Yeah, um, we talked a lot about like joining new clubs and finding clubs that your school offers. Um, we talked about sports a little bit. We talked about workload and like managing that. And yeah. All right, great. Next slide, please. So I want to do a quick commercial about SWE Next. Uh, and this is the last part of our program today. So SWE Next is committed to bringing you resources and programming. And the whole focus of those resources and programming is to inspire you to pursue engineering and technology and computer science, inspire you to pursue those kinds of courses and to prepare you for the journey, the journey to college and beyond. So that's what SWE Next is all about. Um, as you're transitioning, next slide, please. As you're transitioning, I want to point out a couple of resources that we have. Sweenex TV is on the Sweenex website, and this particular webinar, Techniques for Advocating for Yourself, might be a great one for you to watch this summer so that as you start high school, you'll have some ideas about how best to advocate for yourself. And I will drop that um, URL code into the chat box so that it is available to you. Uh, and I'll do that if you be patient for just a minute. I'll figure out how to do that. All right. Um, and then next slide, please. And then this is really cool. This is something that the SWE Next Programs Committee created and they created it for every level in high school. And this is the one for the rising freshmen and it's milestones for college preparation. So on the left-hand side, you have a picture that looks like a little like the game of life. I don't know if you know that game or not, but um, you follow the squares of things you should be doing each semester of your high school as a freshman and with some explanation on the right. And this information can be found um, on the um, SWE Next publications page. And uh, you need to page down a little bit to find it, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop that URL into the chat box also, and you can find it there. And, and I do wanna tell our ambassadors that there's one for rising sophomores and there's one for rising juniors. So if you haven't checked this out, you really should. Um, and finally, I wanna thank everybody, next slide please. I wanna thank everybody for uh, being here. And I very much would appreciate it if you would take the post event survey. You can either hold your camera up to the QR code or I'll go ahead and pop the URL into the chat box. Uh, out of everybody who finishes the survey, we'll go ahead and randomly pick one in a raffle to win a $15 Amazon gift card. So thank you so much for participating in the session today. And we will hang on the line just a little bit. We'll stop sharing the slides and we'll hang on the line just a little bit longer to see if anybody has you know, any, any more questions that they'd like to ask. So thank you so much for attending.